So, a little while ago, Netflix came out with a new animated show, Dead End Paranormal Park. Now, I was always planning to check this one out, on account of the fact that one of the leads is trans. What I was not expecting was for the other one to be autistic. Dead End Paranormal Park is a wonderful, wacky show about a pair of teenagers, Barney and Norma, going in for a job interview at an amusement park and getting wrapped up in demonic shenanigans. Also, Barney's dog Pugsley gets possessed by a demon and he doesn't get all the way exercised, so now the dog can talk and do magic. I greatly enjoyed it, the animation was solid, the characters clicked with me, and the story was good while leaving us on a suitably ominous note for future seasons. But what I'm really here to talk about is the two main characters. As both an autistic and a trans person, I am used to my existence being quietly ignored by children's media. Or in the case of autistic characters, I'm used to a character exhibiting many traits of autism and being written in such a way that most of the autistic fanbase agrees that, yeah, they're autistic, but the show never actually says the word. So in that respect, Norma isn't so different. But actually, she's completely different because she's an autistic character created by an autistic writer based on his own experiences. And I love her. But let's start with the reason I wanted to talk about the show in the first place. Barney Gottman. When I heard that a Netflix show was going to have one of its main characters be trans, I was hesitant, to say the least. I mean, they don't exactly have the best track record, but they have also managed to produce some absolute gems, and then treated those gems like shit. Yes, I am still mad about Julie and the Phantoms. But I've got to say, no matter my distrust of the platform, the creators hit it out of the park with this one. I remember some years ago now, one of those posts that's a joke, but not a joke, floating around Tumblr about how if any number of real people were characters on TV, people would get all up in arms over them being too many things. Now, here we have a trans-gay Jewish lead in a cartoon, starring alongside an autistic Pakistani-American girl who I'm pretty sure is Pan. I've been purposefully avoiding a lot of the stuff about the original books because spoilers, but I'm fairly certain I've got that right. Barney is the kind of trans character I would have killed for growing up. He's allowed to just flat out say that he's trans, while simultaneously being so much more than that. And he's fat. I don't think I can actually express how much that means to me, because as a fat trans guy, one of the things I hated most about my body before I started taking tea was my curves. <laughs> before my fat started migrating, I had that plump hourglass kind of figure, and I hated it. No matter what I wore or how tight I bound, which, by the way, bad idea, bind safely, kids, I felt like I would never pass because I wasn't perfectly skinny with a chest small enough to hide in a baggy sweatshirt. Honestly, my weight is still a massive insecurity, but for more normal we-live-in-a-society reasons now. So seeing a fat trans man just exist and be happy? That means so much to me. He is also shown to be desirable without that ever being commented on. His love interest is Logan, or Logs, who is fitter, taller, and everything that pop culture has deemed to be out of Barney's league. But the show never even suggests that. No one looks at Barney, then at Logs, and gives him that really, you think you have a chance with him? Look that I've come to expect every time a fat character has the audacity to have a crush on someone. Who isn't also fat. The fact that Logs likes him back isn't weird or a lucky break. It's just the usual good luck involved in two people meeting each other and happening to catch feelings. 
Now, I don't know how they'll handle the fact that Barney is trans in the context of a relationship, because Barney and Logs only officially became a thing at the end of season one, but with the track record so far, I have high hopes. Everything's not all sunshine and daisies, though. Barney's character also shows something not a lot of media has delved into too deeply, at least that I'm aware of. That is, the slow poison of parents who say they accept you, but don't when it really counts. Barney starts the show moving away from home and into the place he works at, because his parents allow his grandmother to say whatever she likes to him while sitting idly by. A fact that is visualized in a very effective way in the episode where everyone has to face their greatest fear. It doesn't matter that they use the right name and pronouns, what matters is that when it counts, they don't stand up for him. It is an incredibly isolating feeling, and what's worse is that you feel guilty for feeling bad about it. Because things could be so much worse. But you don't have to be grateful for the bare minimum, and Dead End makes that clear. By the end of the season, Barney's mother has realized that her own fear of confronting her mother has made her son suffer, and swears that he won't have to see her again until she changes her attitude. Bridges start being rebuilt, and I hope we get to see more of that, because as affirming as it is seeing a character on screen grapple with some of the same feelings I've had in my life, I do want to see him be happy. And I hope his parents do actually work on regaining his trust, because that's what this is. The moment they allowed him to be verbally abused in front of them, they rightfully lost his trust, and they don't just get to have it back. I know, personally, I will never forget the complete and utter shattering of trust that occurred when my father accidentally outed the fact that he hadn't changed my contact name in his phone four years after I'd come out, because he didn't know how WhatsApp worked. And because of that, I realized part of the reason my grandmother had so much trouble gendering me correctly was because my dad never corrected her, either in private or when I was there. That always fell to me, and it materially damaged my relationship with her in the last years of her life. That's something he's never going to be able to make up for, but maybe Barney can have a better ending. Not necessarily with his grandmother, she seems like a nightmare, but with the rest of his family. I hope he does, honestly. Now to the other main character, Norma Khan. She is an autistic girl with a clear special interest in the work of Pauline Phoenix, the founder of Dead End, and a star of several movies, general Hollywood darling in her day. She knows everything there is to know about Pauline's work, the park, everything, and the way they showcase her special interest is extremely relatable. But it's not just her special interest that gets attention. While the show hasn't mentioned that she's autistic out loud, yet there's still time, it has told us in plain language that she has social anxiety. And in particular, there's one scene that's so good at illustrating it, it triggered my own anxiety, so, like, props, but also, oof. She also doesn't like to be touched and can get easily overwhelmed. I especially like how they handled her aversion to touch, because once informed about it, the people around her don't get all weird and offended about it. They respect it and her boundaries, and through the season we see as she grows closer to Barney, Pugsley, and Courtney, she becomes more okay with touching them while remaining touch-averse in general. It's a nice touch to really hammer home that while she's okay with these few people touching her, the same does not go for everyone. They also handle her reaction to having not just her hero, but the center of her special interest turn out to be, frankly, a horrible person. <laughs> really well. It's rough for anyone to realize someone they've looked up to isn't who they thought they were, but for Norma to realize Pauline is just flat-out evil, 
I feel they handled it and her reaction really well. Her genuine heartbreak and grief in the face of the truth is unfortunately relatable to me as someone who grew up with a certain seven installment long series of children's books by a now infamous author. Her song to Pauline in the ninth episode... Oh, yeah, the ninth episode is a musical because the pseudo-possessed dog cast a spell. This show is weird and sometimes downright absurd, and I love it. Anyway, that song genuinely made me cry. I love Norma, I love how they handled her anxiety and her autism, and I am going to be keeping my eyes on this show. Lastly, though, I have to mention just a teeny tiny little bit of an issue. Did Pugsley have to be a pug? Yes, yes, I get it. Pugsley the Pug, named after Pugsley Adams. It's very clever and all, but pugs are such a notoriously unhealthy breed. Look it up if you don't believe me, it's genuinely atrocious. But that's one gripe in the face of an otherwise pretty great show, so... In conclusion, good show, hope we get more seasons. Thanks for watching this video, if you liked it, consider liking it and maybe subscribing. I will be back here Thursday after next. Bye.